going like this. Hello, good afternoon to everybody. My name is Diana Bustamante, and today I would like to talk to you about what you need to know about open houses. In the past 30 years that, that I've been in this business, there have been a lot of open houses I have done. I have done some that were very successful with over 100 people in them. I've also had some that were not so successful, and I sat there all by myself. However, we have to realize in this business that everything we do is for a reason. And sometimes not everything works when we expect it to work. So let's talk about what we need to know about open houses. There are words in the real estate business that make some people happy. The word open house make some buyers happy. And why is that? Well, it means they can just go to a property without anybody, take a look around, hopefully not be harassed by anybody, decide whether they like the house or not. And even if they're not qualified, they can still take a look at the property. So let's take a look at what we need to know, know about why we want to do open houses. As real estate agents, one of the reasons we want to do an open house is to meet a buyer who might be interested in that home that we have open. It doesn't happen every day and that's the reality that somebody walks into the open house and says, I want to buy this house. But every once in a while, it does happen. It's like playing the lottery. You don't know when will be your lucky day. So there are times when somebody walks into the open house and absolutely loves it and says, you know what, I want to buy this house. And that is a great reason to spend a couple of hours having the house open and getting to meet people. Another reason for doing an open house is that maybe people walking in the door are not interested in that particular property. But if you are good at turning them into a buyer for you, you may be able to have other properties available in that same neighborhood or in other neighborhoods. So being able to convert someone that does, is not working with an agent who just came to check out an, an open house and you having the opportunity to offer your services and turning them into a buyer can give you that buyer for another property. So that is also another way that you can get into um, a relationship with someone. Talking about a little bit about those buyers that are looking at properties, according to the NAR profile of home buyers, 44% of recent buyers, the first step for them was to look online at properties for sale. So if we're gonna have a property open and we promote it online, that can give us an opportunity to reach those buyers that are looking at line and like I said before, they want to just take a quick look and see if the property meets their needs. Typically, buyers that look, start looking online will search for 10 weeks and look at about nine homes before they actually become serious about buying. And 89% of those buyers who looked online eventually purchased their home through an agent or a broker. So there's your first opportunity to get in front of those buyers before they meet somebody else. The NAR profile of home buyers from 2016 said that 50% of buyers look at open houses as a way to get information. And where, where you are, they come to you and there's an opportunity to meet them. 
The third reason to have an open house is to meet a future seller. Because sometimes sellers, potential sellers or future sellers, start also doing their research ahead of time before they are ready to sell. If the property is located in their neighborhood they and you have invited them or they feel comfortable stopping at your open house, that gives you an opportunity to meet them before they actually have uh, an interview with, with, another, with another agent. If you make a good impression, that is a great opportunity to have a future listing. So you have to conduct yourself in that open house in a way that makes those people want to work with you when they are ready. Reasons for having open houses. It's actually a very low cost opportunity to meet people. Our job in this business is to be in front of as many people as possible, to shake people's hands, to get into relationship with them. And when you're having an open house, people actually come to you. It gives you great exposure for your business. You are able to showcase your knowledge about the market, the real estate market, as well as that particular neighborhood and it gives you the opportunity to showcase that particular property and also gain experience in the process. Another great reason for having an open house is that you're able to build your database with all those new relationships you're establishing. And that database can help you in the future when you stay in touch with people that you've met. Obviously, the open house services the listing because you're actually promoting that property to potential buyers, and it gives that property exposure. Exposure is what makes a happy seller. The reason they list with us is because we have ways of exposing their property and the listing to potential buyers and it helps you differentiate yourself from other agents. According to a recent survey, between 25 to 50 percent of people who come to open houses will turn into a transaction in the future. Your job is to make sure you provide the service they are looking for so that when they are ready to buy, they think of you. There are some drawbacks to doing an open house. Obviously, you cannot control the quantity of people who will show up. Sometimes you get so many people that it's hard. It's, it's hard to control a few dozen people that come to the open house. The last open house I had a couple of weeks ago, it was like a revolving door. As people, two people, three people were leaving, four people were arriving. And it is pretty nerve wracking when you have so many people and you have no idea, different people going in different directions. You also cannot control the quality of the people, whether they are looky loos or they are actual buyers, if they're qualified or not qualified. They might be nosy neighbors or just people who have nothing to do on a weekend and come in into your open house. It also takes time out of your day to prepare for that open house in order to be able to do a good job. Time invested during the week to get everything ready for the open house, as well as during that day. You have to assume that that, full, that will be a full day of work for you. And that may be more than you can handle for that particular day. But other than, than that, um, there might be some issues with the seller. Um, you also want to make sure that the seller is not home because that would definitely not be um, as well received by the buyers that come to the open house as, um, as you might think. So let's talk about the first thing to do. First, you have you need a listing. You can't have something open that you don't have a listing for. 
One of the advice, the best advice I can give you is if you're planning to do an open house on the weekend, start from the beginning thinking about when would be the best time to get it to go live. If you start on a Wednesday afternoon or Thursday morning, putting the listing on the MLS, you can actually include in the remarks from day one that there will be an open house on the weekend. This gets people excited about taking a look at the property if they have been looking around and they haven't found anything. Um, it, it gives them something exciting to look forward to for the weekend. Now, if you do not want to have any showings the day of the listing or a couple of days soon after and you want to build even more excitement, you are able to do a delayed showings um, but you do need a special form to be signed from the multiple listing service. If you belong to the Garden State Multiple Listing Service, there is a new change to um, that. In the past, it was called the delayed showings form. Now it is called the coming soon listing form. It has to be completed and submitted at the time that the listing goes live or on the MLS. Both the seller and the listing broker agree that there will be absolutely no showings of the property to any prospective purchasers or any real estate agents. There will be no previews or caravans prior to the first showing date. So if you are able to get this signed at the time of the listing, you have to get all the sellers to agree and sign on the document. It also has to be submitted to the multiple listing service. Um, again, nobody, even the listing agent, can show the property prior to that property coming um, or having the first showing. And also that may be a good opportunity to tell the seller that in order to have the best um, showing of people and the best first impression to the public is to give a deep cleaning to the property. Uh, staging may be necessary, professional photography, some brochures may need to be printed, get ready with your advertising, virtual tours. All of these things should be done in advance so that everything is ready the day of the open house to provide not only um, a great impression for the property, but also great branding for the agent. Now, not all listings are good for open houses, and we need to keep that in mind. What is a good listing for an open house? And what would not be a good listing for an open house? Obviously, if the owner refuses to leave the property uh, for the open house, that is not a good house to have open. People do not feel comfortable walking around and taking a look at the property while the owner is hovering around. If there are pets that will be left in the house, I would not recommend an open house on that one. But let's talk about some properties that might be good <clears throat> for an open house in a few minutes. Um, so what if you don't have a listing? Well, you can check your company's active inventory and ask other agents in your office who do have listings and maybe want to do an open house but don't have the time or have too many listings. Once you find a property that is good for an open house, um, you want to preview the property prior to the open house. You want to know where the light switches are, what to be concerned about, and become familiar with the property. Make sure you download all of the documents from the property, the seller's property disclosure statement, and get to know that house before you actually do the open house. You want to definitely ask permission from the listing agent that you are able to do that open house. What are the expectations for the leads? You want to have that conversation up front. Several years ago, I had, uh, when I was very, very new, I, I did an open house for an agent in my office. And when I returned from the open house, 
she wanted the list of everybody that came to the open house and basically said, no, these leads are mine. Thank you very much for doing that open house for me. Well, you don't want to have that surprise. You want to make sure that if you're doing the open house and you're expecting to be able to follow up on those leads, that there's not going to be any interference. You want to also confirm that the owner will not be present during the open house and make sure that the pets will be removed from the open house or if there are any pets or children uh, and, um, and that the house is in good showing condition. So what are the best dates for an open house? Traditionally and most popular would be March, April, May, June and August. I don't know why I found this information on the National Association of Realtors websites and um, everybody recommended these dates. Now, the least popular are December and January. However, I can tell you that this past December and January, we have had some open houses that turned out to be very, very, very well attended. So you have to try what is best for you. Obviously, from March to June, it is the, between the spring and beginning of summer market. So there are a lot of properties that come on the market and people do come out a lot more. But again, if you have a property that you need exposure for, an open house is a great way to get people to it. So how do you get people to an open house? You need to do promotion promotion everywhere. So let's talk about the different types of open houses that you might be able to do. A twilight open house is one that is a happy hour setting. It is done at the end of the week, either Thursday or Friday, between 5 to 8 p.m., usually during um, light day hours. So you don't want to do this in the deep of winter. You want some, some light to still be um, on during the day. It attracts professionals coming home from work or people who are leaving work. It also attracts empty nesters. And it is best if the property has some kind of a view that shows off the, uh, the sunset. Sellers like them because they are not disrupted uh, during the, the weekend. They're very convenient because we can sometimes maybe have hec hectic. And they help your listing stand out because not everybody uh, likes to do twilight open houses. So if you're the only one that is available and you are located or the property is located in a easy commuting area, that would be a great opportunity to do a, a, a twilight open house. Um, cautions to keep in mind is that for this type of open house, you want to develop some marketing that shows off that twilight hours. You also need good signage and materials that show off, um, you know, the, the, the beauty of the sky or the, the beauty of the uh, sunset or some kind of, uh, um, show off quality to that property. Also, you need to keep in mind that even though it's a happy hour setting, you do not or should not serve alcohol. There are liabilities to the seller and also for the salesperson and the real estate brokerage. And um, that practice is also discouraged by the realtor associations. There's just way too much liability. So if you can bring some apple cider or something that, that looks like a, a drink but is not, that would be preferred. Properties that show off uh, to commuters the convenience of living in that particular property are great for urban areas. In, in many urban areas, commuting is a big, big uh, factor. Proximity to transportation, or um, if you're close to a highway that um, would, you know, bring more attraction to that particular open house might be great. 
maybe a Friday evening, so when commuters are returning from work, or they get off the bus, they get off the train, and they're walking home, and the, your open house happens to be on the way home, that would be a great opportunity to meet new people. And if you do that on a Friday, you may want to also repeat the open house on a Sunday so that maybe the commuter was able to get uh, home, tells their spouse or their family members, oh, this, I saw this property, but now it's closed. Uh, let's go back on the Sunday because they're having a repeat open house. So the takeaway is that you want to show off the benefits of the location of that particular house. It, it shows off everyday lives and um, you may be able to get some well-qualified buyers who work during the week and don't get have an opportunity to go on the weekend. If you have properties of historical value and people want to relive the past, if there's a story to that particular property or you live in an area that has a lot of historical properties and you want to show off either the area or that particular house, you can maybe turn it into an educational or cultural event. You may be able to get someone from the um, historical society to come and discuss the features of the property or from when the, the property was built. And that can actually become a great um, opportunity to show off that particular property, the area, or also your knowledge about the area. If you have um, extremely luxurious properties, you may want to turn that into also a little cultural event by showing off works of art. You may actually uh, hook up with a, um, a museum, a local museum, or a local artists who may want to show off their art in that particular property during the time the property is for sale. Um, and um, it's not for every property, obviously, but there might be a good opportunity. Just think about the outside of the box and try to find ways to showcase that particular property. Now here's another uh, opportunity to think about or other option for doing an open house, an open house tour. I have personally done this in the past and it was extremely successful. The, the couple of times, the first time I did it, I had five properties open and that one day I sold three out of the five. So the way that it works is that you take either vacant or properties that are not occupied for the day and you do 15 to 20 minute increments and you make kind of like a tour. You start at you when it is advertised, you have to put the times for each individual property and the times that you will be there. Obviously, the time the property has to be ready to go. All the lights are on um, before you, um, you you start heading your tour. You can choose from three to five houses, and they should be in close proximity to each other. You don't want to be driving 20 minutes from one house to the next. You want to make it so that it's like, you know, just a few minute car ride or even walking distance. If you have two or three properties on the same block or in the same neighborhood around the block from each other, those would be great opportunities for doing this type of house tours. So you have a designated time to meet after the open house and after everybody has had a chance to take a look at the properties, you can designate a specific time in your office for people who are interested in making an offer. Um, if somebody missed it, you can arrange for one of your agents in the office or a colleague to meet people at those particular properties to give them the opportunity to see it. By limiting the amount of time at each house, it builds interest, momentum, and great excitement. So um, 
again, this is only good if you have a few properties close to each other. For preparation before the open house, you want to make sure you have enough signs in order to uh, direct people in the correct way to your open house. You can use balloons or ribbons to make your open house signs stand out. And you want to use as many signs as the law in that particular area allows. There are many towns and you have to check with each town what towns do not allow for open houses. If, if they are allowed, go for it and put out as many open house signs as possible. But if there are limitations, you do not want the law against you. You do not want to lose your signs or possibly get a ticket. So please check with the town where the open house will be held to make sure you are allowed to put directional signs out on public, um, on public streets. You can use a mix of branded and specialty signs. You can advertise a theme if you do have one. You can also have some giveaways, fresh coffee or maybe uh, local bakery treats, ice cream in the summer, a list of uh, foreclosures in the area or some other giveaways. You also can piggyback on other people's open houses. So if you know that there are other real estate companies or agents that are doing open houses in that particular area, you can actually add your open house last minute because you know that they've advertised their open house and they will definitely have activity and you can basically get some of their potential uh, activity coming over to also check out your property. You want to start, start early, as, as early as possible. I usually put my signs out the day of around 7 a.m., giving people up the opportunity to uh, take a look as they're driving around their day, doing their chores, or um, going to wherever they're going, but they see that the open house will be happening, and you want to put an open house rider on the property. So if somebody at 7.30 in the morning is driving by, following your directions, they don't go knocking on people's doors at 7 o'clock in the morning. But if you have put a open house rider on the sign at the property, um, instructing them what is the specific day and time that the open house will be happening, um, they will be able to know what time and they'll be able to come back to the open house later. Talking about invitations, you can invite the neighbors. Do not be afraid of meeting the neighbors. You can give them a private showing, a sneak peek ahead of time, or you can put door hangers, giving them an opportunity to come ahead of time. I, in the past, have done a uh, private showing to neighbors between 12 and 1. And then the public comes up from 1 o'clock until 3. So this gives you a great opportunity to meet neighbors, and they're not going to be competing with the actual potential buyers at the time that the open house starts. You can also send invitations to current buyers and to listing agents who have homes in that same area because maybe they have somebody they may send over to you. Now, I have database and past clients, and I have asterisks next to that because you may not necessarily want to tell the whole world, especially all the past clients who have moved away or may be inconvenienced with your invitations for something that they're definitely not interested in. But here you may have a past client who um, lives in the neighborhood that you may want to say, look, you know, if you know somebody who wants to move to the neighborhood, why don't you keep that property in mind or send them over. You can also use targeted advertising on the MLS. Obviously, you can add the open house on the MLS the day that you list it. You can send postcards out. You can post it on realtor.com, on Zillow, Facebook. You can send um, by email to specific lists. You can post blog about it, and obviously use 
uh, Twitter. During the week before the open house or a couple of days before, you can use voicemail and email to invite your sphere of influence. You can use Instagram stories about the neighborhood, but also you can showcase the house during the day of the open house. And you can do live streaming on Facebook. When you are preparing what you are going to be handing out at the open house, you want to have some brochures, you want to have available the seller's property disclosure statement, and if it applies, the lead paint addendum. You also want to have available the consumer information statement, especially for New Jersey requirements, and the dual agency form in case somebody walking in the door agrees that they want to make an offer on that property, you need to let them know that you are already representing the seller and they have an opportunity to also have representation from you as a dual agent. You also may want to have some rate sheets with mortgage programs that would that property would qualify for, area comparables or information about that area, or market reports that you can get from RPR, which are very helpful for buyers, especially if they are coming from other locations and they're not familiar with that particular area. Especially for those people who are from out of the area, you may want to have a list of recent sales in the neighborhood. And also, if, there, if you have other open houses or your office has open, um, other open houses in the area, you may want to have a map showing them where they are located. Obviously, business cards are also very helpful because you can give them to the people that come in and they might uh, be able to have all the information you need, they need. The day of the open house, you should be dressed professionally but comfortable. Remember, you may have to be going up and down the stairs from the basement to the first floor, to the second floor, to the attic, and outside around the house many, 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 many times. You want to arrive early, and please do not park in the driveway or in the front of the property. You want to leave convenient spaces for visitors to park. I usually park either across the street or down a few a few houses away so that the front of the property is open and available for the people I want to come and visit my open house. If people have to drive around the block two or three times and they cannot find parking, they may just give up and not even bother uh, coming to your open house. You will definitely get hungry, but I would recommend that you eat before your open house, not during the open house. That just does not give a good impression to buyers. And please bring your smile. Smile all day long. The house, you want to have all the lights turned on, open the blinds and the curtains, tidy up. Sometimes people left in a hurry and they didn't have a chance to leave the house the way you would expect it to be. I have made beds, I have done dishes, I have put things away, but that is just part of the, uh, the first impression you wanna give. Make sure valuables are away or hidden, that there are no firearms or drugs um, in easy view and visible. You want to have the house in a good, comfortable temperature and make sure the homeowners and the pets have already left. So now everybody always asks the question, should everyone sign in? We would love for everybody to sign in and sometimes they do, and the reality is that sometimes they don't. And sometimes when they do sign in, they give you the wrong information. How do you verify that information? It's very difficult to do it at that moment when they're signing in. There are people who just flat out refuse to sign in. You do need to be aware of this and explain to the seller that that may happen. 
And as much as we would love to have everybody sign in and know exactly who they are so we can follow up, some people just do not want to be followed up with. So these are just some ideas as to how to capture clients at the open house and get them to be willing to give you the um, their information. You want to welcome visitors at the door and be friendly but not pushy. You want to stage your informational packets in a way that they basically have to sign in to get your packet. You can also use electronic signing sheets and there are different free uh, electronic signing sheets that are available uh, through some MLSs and there are some that you have to pay a minimum amount to use. You can also ask visitors to send you a text or accept your text and there you would be able to have their number and then you just simply add their, their name to the text. You also want to approach visitors to the, during the walkthrough while they're walking through the property. And if possible, if you don't have too many people, start a conversation with them. You also can give, uh, give away handouts electronically. That will help you collect their email addresses. And once you have their email address, sometimes you can get the name from that. Um, or you can simply ask what their um, name is so you can get their um, correct information to be able to send them the information. Sometimes I do it right on the spot. If there are things of interest that you have um, set out on the table and you only have one copy, you can say, I have these available in electronic form and I can send it to you right now. Just give me your email address and I will send it to you right now. So those are quick ways that you can capture their information. But the information has to be that you are offering to them has to be appealing to them. Also in the preparation, you may want to display some features, special features um, with signs um, that you post around the property. For example, look down hardwood floors if there's a fireplace or there's a walk-in closet. It helps to distinguish your listing and make things obvious that may not be obvious to the average person. In the kitchen, for example, the cabinets may be pull-out cabinets. You may want to highlight that on a sign and when they open the, the cabinet door, it shows what they can do in that cabinet. The objective of an open house or your goal is to schedule an appointment after the open house and that they give you the opportunity to follow up with them. Maybe not for the same day, but for after the open house to, get, to be able to show them other properties that are available in that particular neighborhood. What else can you do in an open house? Well, you can team up with other agents from your office to do open houses or team up with competitors. If there are other agents, regardless from what company they are, that have listings in that same neighborhood, you can team up with them and have a great event where everybody has open houses and you can actually create a lot more activity. You can also share in the advertising costs in the local paper or magazines, invitations, you may offer some food or some events um, or some giveaways. You do want to be aware of safety issues and the National Association of Realtors has a safety kit that anybody can download who is a member from the realtor, nar.realtor. Um, if the area is not very safe. You may also alert the police departments that you will be in the area just in case. You want to make sure your cell phone has good strength, that you determined, um, you know, some ways of uh, being safe in the property and around the property. Um, in that situation, if you feel that you don't want too many people in at the same time, you may want to leave a sign outside the door saying I am showing the property at this time 
and I will be right with you so people will be able to um, to wait for you and know that you have not just been ignoring the doorbell. You may also inform a neighbor that, you know, if you see anything going going on that is strange during the open house um, to let to alert you. You can also have a friend or a relative come over to visit you during the open house and basically not there to chat, but actually just have, um, you know, just check up on you and take a quick visit through the open house. Um, you also may want to say to visitors to stay together while they're looking at the property. So it is very good to have good safety at open houses and be aware. But it is also, it's always very good to make sure that, um, that um, um, you keep safety in mind for yourself as well as for the property. And um, not everything will work all of the time, but everything works some of the time. So don't give up on doing open houses just because some people don't like them. Do your own thing and make sure that you do an open house in the best way possible, that you provide a great uh, great feedback to the homeowner. And um, the more you do, the more you will get. That is for sure. I see that some of you have made some comments and it is great to collaborate with other agents doing open houses. And um, and it, it works great because everybody gets something out of it. And you actually are able to, um, to share and send people to the other open houses. And you know that when you're collaborating with other people, they will be more um, inclined to collaborate with you. I thank you so much for coming to this webinar today. And if you have any questions at all about what I discussed in this webinar today um, or in any other webinar, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at my email address, Diana Bustamante at realtyexecutives.com. I hope this has been informative and uh, you have a wonderful Friday. Goodbye.